Welcome back to Living at Weight. Rich Miano was a hard-working University of Hawaii safety that was drafted by the Jets in the sixth round. He played in the NFL for 11 total years, well beyond the average skilled position player. He joins us now to talk about his playing days in Super Bowl 52, a place he grew up as a young kid and a place he played in the NFL after the Jets. Thank you so much, my brother from another mother, <laughs> but the same, same dad. dad. Yeah, same dad. <laughs> hey, uh, so six years uh, for the Jets. You got drafted by the Jets in what round? The sixth round. The sixth round, that's right. Yes. So tell, tell me a little bit about your playing days. Well, it started off with playing at the University of Hawaii, and then when I got drafted by the Jets, I was just so excited to go to the media capital of the world and mm -hmm. back to my birthplace, the East Coast, so to speak. And uh, it was just a wonderful opportunity to play in the National Football League. Um, you had to make a, quite a comeback because not many people come back from the knee injury that you suffered uh, while being a Jet. Um, but you came back and you actually signed on uh, to play four more years with the Eagles. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, that was phenomenal because I think we had probably one of the greatest defenses in the history of uh, football. Number one against the run, number one against the pass, number one overall. But I think just as important as that is when you play with guys like Reggie Wright, Jerome Brown, uh, mm -hmm. Clyde Simmons, uh, Eric Allen, those type of guys, you knew you were going to dominate and you were part of such a great thing. And just being in Philadelphia where they care more about Eagles football than any other topic. <laughs> I, in fact, it's one of it was the topic of a movie with uh, Mark Wahlberg. And that's I loved, yeah, yeah, it's just a great movie. But I mean, your camaraderie, the way you were, uh, the way you were taken in by Randall Cunningham, a lot of those guys. I mean, you were right there in the thick of things. Yeah, and the most amazing thing is kind of an eclectic group when you talk about Jim McMahon and Tim Harris and Herschel Walker and all the stars that we had. And it was just kind of the era of the Dallas Cowboys, though, where they had Troy Aikman and Emmitt mm -hmm. Smith and Michael Irvin. So we didn't That's go to the way you just picked off Troy Aikman right there. That was awesome. <laughs> Twice in one half, which is something <laughs> that, you know, his ringtone goes, touchdown Aikman, touchdown Aikman. Mine goes, interception Miano, interception Miano. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, hey, uh, four years with the Eagles. Uh, and then one year with the Atlanta Fal uh, Falcons. I'm assuming that after they thought you shouldn't be playing anymore, yes. you thought you had one more year left. At yeah, least. that always is the case. Right. Very rarely do you ever leave the sport on your own. There's usually some type of condition. Either you're too old, too slow, you get injured, they don't want you anymore. But that was June Jones, and that was Atlanta Falcons. And it was a city that I always wanted to kind of visit, live, work in. And just to extend my playing career was phenomenal in Atlanta. Okay, I'm going to uh, conjure up your analyst now. <laughs> Before we get to your pick, let's talk a little bit about the only local boy in the Super Bowl. Yeah. He's uh, Eagles special teams player slash linebacker, Kamu Grugier Hill, and what you think about him, because he is a phenomenal player who uh, really was under the radar for a lot, of, a lot of things coming out of high school. It's incredible because he reminds me of myself in a lot of ways. The commonalities is one that we were both drafted in the sixth round. Two is we didn't play a lot of high school football. Yeah, he was a soccer player. Soccer player. Yeah. And and the you know starting off in special teams and being drafted by the Patriots, but now playing for the Eagles. I mean, and playing in a Super Bowl this early. So it's it, big props because he is going to be an outstanding role model for anyone that thinks about playing in the National Football League. You don't necessarily have to play Pop Warner flag football. Soccer to the National Football League. I mean, great story. So he was a undersized safety. Oh, actually, he was an oversized safety, undersized linebacker, and he actually kicked off four times for the Eagles. I mean, he uh, was drafted in the sixth round by the Patriots, in fact, uh, but did but got cut on the final cuts. Now he's with the Eagles. This is clearly his his home because uh, he's he led all uh, all tacklers on special teams with 19 in 2017. Just a guy that we have to, you have to cheer for, even if you think the Patriots will win. Yeah, it's an amazing story, too, how Dino Babers found this guy who really yeah. wasn't a Division I scholarship type of athlete because he didn't play much football, and then get drafted by the Patriots shows you that the versatility, the ability to play different positions. And, what, and they do their research. They vet these young men out. So being drafted by the Patriots shows how outstanding he was in college and now being the leading tackler on, uh, for the Philadelphia Eagles in terms of special teams. This guy has a bright future. We're going to talk to you a little bit more uh, later in the show. Real quick, I just want your team name, and then we'll say why a little later in the show. Tell me, Patriots or Eagles? I got to go with the Patriots. OK. <laughs> All right. The, the place you grew up. Loyal we'll to find out girl. why he thinks the Patriots are going to win the Super Bowl a little later in the show. But coming up, game night opens in theaters this weekend.